you need to figure out what works for you. Like some people enjoy doing whole body workouts. So they'll do a whole body workout on a Monday, a whole body workout on a Wednesday, a whole body workout on a Friday. They'll take the weekend off and they'll do it again. So I'm with the board A-hole here. Thank you for joining me as always. And again, make sure you click the card that should pop up on the screen at any moment to figure out why this video doesn't seem to be edited very well. It's all to do with this, my ridiculous injuries. And because I am unable to edit videos properly, so it's just me talking towards a camera, I thought I would go through a bunch of fitness gym health-related questions that people have sent me and finally answer them. I mean, the reason I don't usually do these videos is because nobody watches them, but we will throw it out there and we shall see what happens. And genuinely, one of the most that I get, especially on my Instagram, cheap plug at Simon316, in that weird private message box that you click, and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> millions of people have, well, millions, but dozens of people have contacted me, is literally, how often should I be going to the gym? How often should I be training? Am I only training? What is overtraining? And so on and so forth. Now, it stands to reason that you need some rest days. I want to get this out there early on because I know how YouTube works, especially with audience retention. You grow when you are recovering, right? So don't buy into this social media lifestyle. We have to be training every single day at 100 miles per hour because eventually it is going to catch up to you. Now, are there people that can avoid this? Of course, it's going to depend how well you are recovering with your sleep and your food and all these kind of stuff. But ultimately, if you are just a non-professional athlete I'll go with, you're going to need some time off. Be that one day, two days, three days, you're going to have to figure out what works for you. But this also comes into the plan that you want to do. My favorite gym plan, as I said many, many times, and I will continue to say, is push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, right? That's what I do. That's my seven-day thing. So I will do, you know, chest, shoulders, and triceps. Then I will do back, traps, and biceps. I don't want to find this so hard. Then I'll do legs. Then I will rest, and then I'll do it again. Now, the big question you get after that is people say, well, do I take a rest after the second round? So do I do push, pull, legs, rest, <laughs> push, pull, legs, rest? And it's totally up to you. It depends how you're feeling. I mean, if we do that on a, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rest, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so you get to Sunday, I probably wasn't even, that was massively incorrect. You know what I'm saying? When you get to, you know, the end of round two, you can see how you feel. Are you ready to do another push session? And the best way to do that is literally, how do you feel? That's the greatest advice I ever got when it went to go into the gym is listen to your body. And it sounds a little bit cheesy and a little bit like, oh man, come over here and let's, uh, you know, zen out. But it's absolutely true. Most of the time, you know whether you need to go to the gym or whether you need a rest day. Now, there is this kind of gray area where sometimes you're just being a lazy so-and-so, and that's when you do need to drag your ass to the gym. But if more often than not, you're kind of feeling a little bit drained and you feel like you don't have the right kind of energy, maybe you would actually benefit more from resting, which means you should rest. And I get you want to go so we can eat all the food and have whatever your post-workout meal, blah, blah, blah is. But if your goal is to get in better shape, your body is to grow and your body is to recover, et cetera, et cetera, then that's what you should be doing. Now, if you're doing a different kind of split, let's say you're doing a bro split. So you're doing, I don't know, Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday arms, Thursday leg, Friday shoulders. That's a terrible split. You shouldn't do it. But when you get to day six on that one, what do we start with? Chest, right? You have given your chest basically four days to recover. So you probably can go again. Now, that's not taken into account that you're always going to work some sort of secondary muscle, right? Like, for example, when you work your triceps on Wednesday, whenever I said arm day was, it stands to reason that on Monday when you were doing your chest, you're probably going to use a little bit of triceps. Now, maybe that would be so sore, but you're giving yourself so much time to recover. Now, personally... If you're doing that split, I would be tempted to take the Saturday off, maybe even the Sunday too, depending on what you want to do. But it goes to show there is no one shoe fits all, right? That's the problem, I think, when it comes to going to the gym. We all expect there to be just some magic piece of advice that we hear and we apply that. And then finally, oh my gosh, I'm achieving all my dreams and I'm achieving my goals and I'm a big jack person or whatever the hell it may be that you're going for. And it's not the case. You need to figure out what works for you. Like some people enjoy doing whole body workouts. So they'll do a whole body workout on a Monday, a whole body workout on a Wednesday, a whole body workout on a Friday. They'll take the weekend off and they'll do it again. And I would probably argue, I mean, you're taking a lot of time off there, right? Because you're taking off Tuesday, you're taking off Thursday, and you're taking off Saturday and Sunday. So you're only training three days a week. But because you are absolutely smashing your body in a 48-hour period, stopping and then do it again in a 48-hour period, you could absolutely come up with the argument that maybe that person is going to be more tired and overtraining more than someone that is doing the other splits where just naturally you're getting rested even though you're going to the gym. And that's why it's crazy when people say, this is the way. This is the way. This is what you need to be doing. You must be having two days rest. You must be having three days rest. And also, when you get older, you probably are going to need more rest because your body doesn't recover as quickly as it did before, which is why 
it's probably worth getting some supplements that are going to help you with the recovery. Glutamine is a very, very good one. But this isn't some, once again, it's not some kind of special formula. You don't work out, you know, you know, you push a workout on a Monday and then decide on Tuesday you want to work chest again. And just because you drank a load of glutamine, you're going to be able to go. No, that's not true. And in fact, you should probably never do that. In terms of how long you should rest a muscle, I mean, it really is how long is a piece of string. But I would think you want to give it at least three days which is a stupid thing to throw out there anyway, because it could be four days, it could be five days. But the way I look at it is, if I chain chest on Monday, do I want to be training chest on Wednesday? Probably not. But Thursday, this ties into my push-pull legs resting. So usually that would be the day you're resting. But if I had a busy weekend, would I go to the gym and redo my push routine? I probably would, because I want to make sure I get it in within that week period. But that's a one-off. And ultimately, I'm always giving it an extra day before I go, before I go back to chest. So... There is no hard and fast rule with this, but I do think you need to be smart with it and you absolutely need to get out of the headspace. I'm going off my own experience here and how I used to be. You need to get out of your own headspace of more is more, right? <laughs> more, more is not more. You can kick your ass for a long old time and your body will adapt and find ways to deal with it, but eventually it's going to come back round and you're not going to be seeing the same evolution that you want. And don't forget, that's the goal. Like if I told you, I love going to the gym, it's the best thing ever, but if I told you right now, you never had to train again, as long as you stick to this uh, nutrition plan, you're going to have the greatest physique on the planet. I imagine, you know, nine times out of 10, people just stop going to the gym because that will have a I've got what I wanted to achieve. So I'll use that time to be more productive elsewhere. So always keep your mind on actually where you want to go. So for example, when you're bulking and eating more calories, you can probably go to the gym more than when you're leaning up and you're not taking enough calories in because, you know, it stands to reason you're going to be more tired, you're going to be more lethargic, and you're not going to have enough energy. I'm going to throw this piece of advice in here. I talk about it all the time, but it's important. Remember, too, when you do start um, getting on your cut and losing weight, keep your lifts the same. Don't switch from doing, let's say you are doing, you know, six to eight reps on a bench press. Don't all of a sudden switch to, to 12 reps plus because the best way to ensure that you're losing fat as opposed to muscle is to keep your strength up. And if you're basically benching the same as you were, you know, day one, as you are on day 79, that's a great barometer to say, all right, I'm heading in the right direction. But of course, if you are consuming less food, ultimately you're not going to be recovering as well so maybe when you do get to that point you're trying to get shredded you do actively need to go to the gym less otherwise you're going to put too much stress on your body and you don't want that either when your cortisol level goes up which obviously is the stress hormone it's just bad news right it's bad news brown you're not going to be happy you're not going to feel good your lifts are absolutely going to suck it's going to affect your physique and basically a ton of terrible things happen and there's a lot of people out there that assume they have some kind of medical condition or they're struggling with this or they're struggling with that where absolutely actually what's happening is their cortisol levels are too high and you can get this test it's quite expensive but you can get a blood test that will uh, let you know what your cortisol level is and nine times out of ten it's going to be higher than you actually think because life is just stressful like if you only get sort of three or four hours sleep compared to six seven eight that you're aiming for just naturally your body goes into stress mode because again you haven't recovered which kind of ties into this video so if what you're doing doesn't feel like it's working, before you actually change the program and maybe fiddle around with your diet, maybe throw in an extra rest day to begin with. I mean, that's the easiest thing you can do. I'm literally telling you to do nothing. It's like me telling you to grow a beard. The effort to grow a beard is nothing. You just stop shaving. So throw an extra rest day in there. Give it some time, two, three, four weeks, and then see if you've kind of balanced out a bit because I bet that you would be surprised how much it can help. I know I used to go to the gym every single day because I thought, oh, that's what I've got to do to be a big jack guy. And it was just ridiculous. And when I did throw in my rest days, again, not only did I feel better, not only did it make me more excited about the gym because absence makes the heart grow fonder, but also because I had more energy and more like, here I go. But I did, I saw, you know, I saw gains. <laughs> I got bigger and I got all more ripped or depending on what I was trying to handle because I was giving my body a chance to catch up with my brain. And that's what you got to do. You can be the most driven and tenacious person on the planet. But if you're outworking your body, eventually it's just going to shrug its shoulders. Like Homer in that Simpsons clip where Ned Flanders is talking to him about cider and apples and the brain just leaves. That's what your body will do. It's like, well, brain, you can keep doing whatever you want, but I'm exhausted. So I'm just going to switch off the fire and you never want to switch off the fire. So again, I'm not saying there's any right or wrong when it comes to how you want to do your split but get your rest days in there 
Otherwise, you ain't gonna get where you wanna be. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell, ding, ding. Please click the bell, ding, ding. Apparently, nobody's getting notifications anymore, so I guess you're gonna have to unnotify, then re-notify. It's a nightmare with YouTube at the moment. There's also another video on the screen. Please do give that a click, even if you don't watch it, because YouTube loves it for the algorithm. And finally, my videos will start being suggested again. Grillamine.com forward slash Simon. Get 10% off all their products. I'm a big advocate for them. I think they're good. In Greg Doucette's Power 13 Cookbook. Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter if you want to send me anything to talk about. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316 on Cameo and Simon Miller at BigCartel.com for merchandise. The best way to do it is to go into that description box down there. You'll see subscription buttons. You'll see social media buttons. You will see merchandise buttons and Cameo buttons and all these kind of things. Anything you can do to help the channel would be massively appreciated. Thank you very much as well for sticking by me as I do do these half ass videos. And if you care about the hand, it really flubbing hurts. And I would rather this wouldn't have happened. It's annoying me a little bit, but life is set to try us. Weird salute. See you soon.